My name is Michael Pollan, and I have been a professor here since 2003, and I teach in the Graduate School of Journalism. What's kind of amazing about these pictures is that the university is so much bigger than the little islands of buildings that we think of it as, and that it, it reached out into the, into the landscape of California, every part of that landscape. And there are images of deserts here, there's images of farmland, there's images of water, images of, of forest. This is such a moment of confidence on the part of the university and on the part of the society about public education. Um, this looks like a very well-funded school. This looks like a school that has that is building, that is extending out its tendrils to the landscape and, and has these beautiful research farms and wilderness areas. And there's a great sense of uh, anything is possible and we can do it here. But of course, this is all before Proposition 13, right? This is a, this is a time capsule. Um, this is what the public realm can do um, pre that, that turning point. And now that we're in such an era of straightened circumstances, there's a sense of lowered horizon when I look at this um, that I thought was kind of sad. The role of this university in creating California agriculture is critical. Uh, and, and, and I was reminded of that looking through here. Nothing we knew about agriculture anywhere else in the country really applied. Everything had to be created. How do you do rice in California? How do you do orchards in California? How do you do water in California? I mean, it, was, it really was like inventing agriculture on the moon in a certain way. And this university had a lot to do with figuring out how, how it could be done. California agriculture is very different than agriculture anywhere else. It's much more mechanized in, in, in many ways, and, um, and, there, and there's been a lot of innovation. And this lettuce picker, uh, I thought was an extraordinary machine, but I also liked the way Adams managed to get people in this picture. Um, and they're very specific, and they're in focus, and um, what an amazing amount of visual information to get in one image. And I didn't know that my university had a role in this kind of innovation. With this machine, one man will replace perhaps a dozen men. An electronic sensor determines the maturity of the lettuce head. I thought that was pretty cool. A curved paddle grasps it, a knife cuts the stem, and a conveyor belt moves the lettuce to the waiting truck. I mean, this one's great. Um, and this is a, a rice farm near Sacramento. And as it says, research has been key to the success of rice farming in California. Um, the Rice Experiment Station, a cooperative venture at the university, the federal government, and the growers was established in Sacramento Valley in 1912. Um, and so scientists found the varieties best adapted to the region, worked out cultivation techniques. I mean, you're growing rice in a desert, you know, which is, you wouldn't think you could do. But on the other hand, there's this amazing annual flow of water through the, uh, through the delta, and they figured out how to do it and get very good at it. Um, and now we're sending rice down through the Sacramento River to, to Asia. And I don't think a lot of people realize the connection between places like this and this landscape that we're in, this university. But, they're, but they're, those, those connections are really direct and, and quite organic. This is pre-planting fumigation of soil, Salinas Valley. Um, this is still done uh, with strawberries. And it's a, um, we have since learned, is a, is a really... Um, dangerous practice. Methyl bromide was used most commonly. I don't know if that was being used in the late 60s. But basically the idea of, is to kill the, uh, the activity, the, the life in the soil um, as a way to eliminate disease in, in things like strawberry crops. So what you would do is you would put plastic over your planting row and shoot uh, chemical gas. And since it couldn't escape this way, it went down into the soil. And that gas basically sterilized the soil. This is a troubling way to, uh, as this picture tells you, I mean, plastic? What is black plastic doing here on this farm? There's something wrong with this picture. Um, but this was the height of, you know, sophistication at the time. Um, so this plays very differently to modernize than it did, I think, when it was done. The idea that you could, you know, fumigate the soil and, and kill the disease in advance of planting, that must have seemed very cool at the time. Ansel Adams probably had read Silent Spring, and he probably knew a little bit about fumigation and the kinds of chemicals that were used. So. I don't know enough about them to say for sure, but there are people who knew that this was not a good idea. They were just kind of in the minority. They were crying in the wilderness. Soil activity, Rachel Carson writes about this, uh, soil activity is very important to the health of a crop. 
And if you zap one microbe, you're probably going to give an edge to another, and you're going to have imbalances. And so um, I don't recall whether she talks about methyl bromide in particular in Silent Spring, but the, these kind of practices she was all over. And, and uh, so as someone who um, you know is deeply concerned about the environment, and uh, I can't believe he hadn't read that book. So. So my guess is he had mixed feelings about this landscape. I wish our university was just as involved in, in developing the alternatives to that, but that's starting to happen a little bit at Davis. I mean, we're going to have to reinvent our agriculture in California. So why isn't this university part of that process? Um, and there are people on this campus who want it to be, and there are people at Davis who want it to be. But that's the next, in agriculture, that's, that's the next project. Um, and, you know, where we are now is we, we're hoping the private sector will do that. Um, but my guess is a lot of that research to figure out a way to produce food that is, um, doesn't take as much fossil fuel, doesn't have as, as deep an environmental footprint, um, is conducive to the public health. All that work uh, will need to be done, I, I think, by, by a public institution. Um, and uh, we are very well positioned to do it, um, but you need the commitment of the public.